Good morning. Welcome to Inquisition Update. My name's Tom Fress, and I'll be your host for the next hour. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this morning, I, I intended to continue in the book, The Ark and the Dove by J. Moss Ives, but I had a discussion yesterday afternoon with uh, Brother Daryl Eberhardt, uh, owner of the website ToughIssues.org, about an article or uh, a, a document that appears on the front page of Berean Beacon, uh, BereanBeacon.org. It has to do with Marian apparitions. And I've been saying on this broadcast and on amateur radio for a good long time, if you want, and particularly after we read the book here on Inquisition Update, uh, a Queen of Rome, Queen of Islam, Queen of All, the Marian apparitions plan to unite all religions under the Roman Catholic Church by Tetlow, Oakland, uh, Tetlow, Oakland, and Myers, that to be on the, the cutting edge of understanding of what the intentions are of the Roman Catholic Church in this new world order is to pay particular and close attention to what is being said by these demonic apparitions known as Mary in the Roman Catholic Church. Fatima, Lourdes, Medjugorje, and the, the hundreds of apparition sites around the world. And Daryl uh, Eberhardt told me about an article that deals with this particular subject on uh, Richard Bennett's website, BereanBeacon.org. And I asked Daryl to come to this program this morning, and uh, let's have a discussion about what, it, what is contained in that, in that article and what information we can glean as a warning. My brother, Daryl Eberhardt, are you with me this morning? Yes, I am, Tom, and it's good to be on Inquisition Update again. And uh, this topic is, is kind of scary, maybe for some folks, uh, and I want to make some stuff clear right at the beginning, Tom. Uh, uh, and I, I know many of the listeners have heard this before, but uh, we never know when we have new listeners. And I think it's an important point to make is, uh, no, I'm not Roman Catholic, but I was born into a family where my dad was Roman Catholic. Um, and I still to this day, almost 90% of my relatives, uh, friends, uh, very close friends, and very close relatives are Roman Catholics. So I love many individual Roman Catholics, and I realize that there are many Roman Catholics that are really into Marian apparitions, uh, going to the sites. Uh, millions actually go to, you already mentioned some of the sites, like Fatima. Um, so there's a, a lot of uh, veneration of Mary, and so we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or insult anyone. And again, I just want the listeners to know I love many individual Roman Catholics, and I even married a, a beautiful, wonderful Roman Catholic uh, back in the late '60s. So, uh, and I've attended uh, Roman Catholic catechism courses. I never converted, so but I do have a love for many Roman Catholics, and I hope that that comes through, Tom, whenever I'm on with anybody. Yeah that I don't hate individual Roman Catholics, so please don't accuse me of Catholic hating or Catholic bashing. Well, Daryl, that's a, that's a disclaimer that I don't often make on the program, and it's probably an error on my part. This ministry, Inquisition Update, is much for Catholics as it is for Protestants. And I'm often called a Catholic bash, and I think part of that is because I don't regularly make that disclaimer, hoping that my listeners understand that my real motive is to warn all people of faith to forsake the whore of Revelation 17 and come to know Christ. And that includes Catholics and, and Protestants. The Bible says in Revelation 18, verse 4, Come out of her, my people. Her is the Roman Catholic Church. He says, Come out of the Roman Catholic Church, my people. They're still his people. And though I show very little charity toward the Roman Catholic hierarchy and the Vatican and the leadership of the Roman Catholic Church. I have nothing but sympathy for the Roman Catholic people who've been lied to all their lives. And uh, I will make the disclaimer, I am not a Catholic basher. I do not hate Catholics. But the truth means more to me than people's feelings. And uh, salvation is not about feelings, it's about facts. And that's what this program is about, facts. And that's why I'm having you on this morning. Amen, brother. And, and it's important that, that folks know that. And uh, The Bible's for everyone. And uh, the more and more I read my King James Bible through each year, uh, the more and more I see that the hierarchy 
of the Roman Catholic Church just fits perfectly with uh, what Christ, uh, the way he he described the Pharisees and uh, uh, as uh, uh, and describes as uh, hypocrites and uh, vipers, and he called them all kinds of names. Uh, yeah, whited sepulchers. Whited sepulchers, because he said on the outside they look really neat, but on the inside, and uh, he, in fact, uh, there's a great book, and I'd like to tell the listeners, as I always do, is uh, on the half hour break I'm going to tell you about some books, a great new book that I just. God, by the way, I sent that out to you yesterday, uh, great. a priority, so you should get that Saturday or Monday, Tom. Uh, great. great new book that I came across, but also I want to tell them about some books that are out there that, on Mary and Marian apparitions, because uh, this is a very important topic, because I already mentioned a lot of Catholics are really into this. My best friend and his wife, who came out of Catholicism, by the way, listeners, after over, over 55, 56 years, uh, in that church, uh, being Eucharistic wow. ministers, being uh, teachers of uh, um, the CC, I'm not sure, no, but I can't think of it right now, but it's like catechism classes. Right, that. But anyway, right. they taught in the schools. Um, after uh, she was really into reading everything she could find on Marian apparitions, and if I don't recommend folks do this, but if, uh, a couple weeks ago I went up on a website. I mean, uh, yeah, my best friend's uh, website. And uh, just typed in Marian apparitions and Marian apparition messages, and a bazillion uh, hits I got. Uh, uh, many, many books, uh, most of them uh, written by Roman Catholics, very favorable towards the apparitional messages. But I want the listeners to know that uh, probably about four or five years ago, my best friend's wife, while they were still Catholic, uh, gave me a very, very thick book. I can't remember the name of it. Um, on Marian apparitions, written by uh, uh, I think it was a pair of Roman Catholics. Uh, but it was written by Roman Catholics, and uh, of course very favorable to the messages. And I read; it was kind of tedious reading going through them because I made about three columns, Tom. And um, one was uh, the messages: were they biblical, were they kind of neutral, or were they uh, contradictory totally to Scripture? Right. And, uh, probably about 95 percent of them ended up in totally contradictory to Scripture. Right. Right. And, uh, and that's so, what the, that's how we test. Every spirit, we compare it against the written word of God. And if it contradicts what God said in his word, then we know that it is a false lying spirit. And, and that's one of the main thrusts of this article that we're going to discuss this morning. Right. But continue. Go ahead, Darrell. Right. And, of course, the Bible tells us to test the spirits. But the reason this is so important is, number one, is the, the Roman Catholic, I call it the Jesuit-controlled Roman Catholic Church state with also great mm -hmm. financial um, uh, institution, uh, institutions under it. But this Roman Catholic Church state, with the Jesuits particularly amongst them, really have pushed Mary to exalt Mary and to give her all kinds of titles that really belong to deity. Right. And they have exalted her to such an extent, Tom, that and I know this from living, uh, by the way, folks, where I live is like 70% uh, Roman Catholic in my hometown. And if you head off to a couple of the other home or towns close by, like Blitzen, Loretto, et cetera, they're 90% Roman Catholic. So I live in a sea of Roman Catholicism. And I drive around uh, this area, uh, have a motorcycle, and, and you'll see in uh, many, many yards there's these uh, shrines, some of them uh, three, four, five, six feet high. Uh, almost all of them have Mary in them. A few times you'll see a, a Mary statue with a little short Joseph beside her, about half her size, or you'll see Mary holding the baby Jesus. But most of them are just statues of Mary. And so Mary, for many Roman Catholics, she has become the centerpiece of their religion. And she's their uh, intercessor. She's picked up titles like advocate, co-redemptrix, um, co-mediatrix, etc. Uh, titles, again, that you would have to be God to be omnipotent, omnipresent, to hear everybody's prayers. And again, as I mentioned, my, my best friend's wife, uh, a lot of these uh, Roman Catholics are so into the apparitional messages, they, they buy every book they can on it. Uh, they go and they travel to Lourdes and Magigoria and other places to uh, look for uh, miracles, for healings, etc. And the reason you and I are talking about this today is that, that the potential for deception is so great because so many Roman Catholics, let's remember, they claim, I think, about a billion point three uh, Catholics in the world today. Many, many of them are caught up in the, with this, 
and they're looking for answers. And the, again, the potential for deception is so great because you, with today's holographic technology, mankind himself, and I think I've seen it in several movies. I think one of them was a Spider-Man movie, but where the, you know, you have lasers projecting and you have a three-dimensional figure that can talk. Right. And, uh, but uh, even laying that aside, that mankind has the capability of hoodwinking a bunch of people with uh, a holographic uh, show, is that you also, that demons can appear as angels of light, and that's what you already mentioned earlier, is uh, I believe that these are demons, if not Lucy himself, herself, I mean Lucifer himself. Right. I'm, I'm jo- playing a joke here. Folks. Playing a word. Right. <laughs> well, I know what you're, I know what you're saying. But Lucy herself. Uh, yeah. is appearing, and, and if it's not Lucifer himself uh, pretending to be the biblical Mary, then it's some of his chief demons that are, are appearing. Because, again, when you compare those messages with what the Bible says, where you have this alleged Mary appearing and claiming, uh, come to me, uh, the great chastisement is coming, I'm the one that will save you, uh, come to me for mediation, uh, worship me, when we know that the, uh, Christ himself, when he walked us, we're to worship God. We're not to worship Mary. So Mary, again, has become a big centerpiece. And, again, because of this potential for the latest messages appearing on the uh, Internet, on uh, and books that are written by Roman Catholics, and, and uh, many Catholics buying up these books and reading and believing the messages, is, well, let's just give them a couple mess- a message here. Uh, I want to start out first with a, uh, a book from uh, this one that I'm going to be recommending later. So please do grab your pens or pencils and paper during the break because I'm going to tell you about some of these books. But uh, this book that I got recently, and I think it's one of the best books uh, that I would recommend other than the, the King James Bible, is called Rome in the Bible by David W. Cloud. And I want to give you a message. And now this one is, comes from a human being, and then I want to compare it with uh, a message from Mary. Here's what... Um, David W. Cloud says on page 221 of his book, Rome in the Bible, Pius V, he's talking about Pope Pius V, repeatedly called for the extermination of the Huguenots, or the French Protestants, and tens of thousands of them were murdered, and of course I'm adding this, by professional armies that were called to action by papal Rome, in the persecutions that ensued. Ian Paisley writes, and he writes this on his uh, book, uh, The Massacre of St. Bartholomew, pages 55 and 56. Now listen to this, because this is describing what was put out. The message that was put out by the Pope came straight out of papal Rome, and here's what he says. The Parliament of Toulouse, and now Toulouse is a city in southern France, the Parliament of Toulouse issued a proclamation based on a bull, a papal bull of the Pope, and he's talking about Pius V, the guy we just mentioned, dated March 1568 in which Protestants were described as, now here's a quote from this, based on this papal bull, atheists, men without, living without God, without faith, without law. And then they're describing the Protestants. Jesus Christ himself inspires all good Catholics with the idea of assuming the cross, taking up arms. I want you to pay real close attention to that word, those, that little quote there. Taking up arms and preparing a war. Now, remember, this is the Parliament of Toulouse based on the papal bull by Pius V. Continuing with a direct quote from their own words, and they're talking about the Roman Catholic faithful here. The faithful are reminded that the heretical Albigenses were destroyed in that very district to the number of 60,000. And, and again, addressing the Roman Catholic faithful, are exhorted to pursue with the same fervor These new enemies of God, talking about the French Protestants or Huguenots, and to show them no mercy. If the crusaders, he's talking about these Roman Catholic crusaders, the professional army plus the rapists and murderers they release from prison, they always do, to help murder their intended victims. If the crusaders die in the expedition, their blood will serve them as a second baptism, washing out all their sins, and they will go with the other martyrs straight to paradise. Well, that just sounds exactly like what they told some of the, the poor Shiite young boys that they raced through the, the minefields uh, during the Iraq-Iranian war. Anyway, back to the quote. Uh, this proclamation was resolved at Toulouse on the 21st, September 1568, 
And a note says, now here's another uh, direct quote from this uh, proclamation. The above is done under the authority of our Holy Father, the Pope. Priests are to be the captains of this holy army of faith. Now let's compare it with this uh, messages that you can read on Richard Bennett's website called The Marian Apparitions. On it, it's right now it's listed at the bottom of his homepage. You can click on it. But here's I'm going to give you a, a portion of it. Here's this quote that's coming from this uh, demon that's masquerading as the biblical Mary of the Bible. She or he or who else, it says this. The holy cross bearers of Jesus Christ, let me translate that for you. They mean the Roman Catholic faithful, with whom he shall destroy the Mohammedan sect, and he means Muslim, or she, and the rest of the infidels in a war of self-defense and with the gospel of love. He shall annihilate all the heresies. Now I'm going to tell you what they mean by that. At the top of the list would be Bible-believing Christianity. That's right. And tyrannies of the world. And not succeeding in converting the heretics with science, and again they're addressing the Roman Catholic faithful, shall have to make a vigorous use of their arms. Now, they're not talking about their physical arms, the two arms that are attached They're talking about bodies. weaponry. Yes. After this, they, and it means the Roman Catholic faithful, shall turn their victorious arms against the bad Christians. Now, folks, I want you to realize, now, these messages were bad decades ago. This is horrible, because, let me repeat that. And th after this, after they deal with the bad Muslims, they, the Roman Catholic faithful, shall turn their victorious arms, their weapons, against the bad Christians. I want to translate bad Christians for you. That's Bible-believing Christians who will not bow to papal authority. That's, That's exactly Bible-believing right. Christians who call the, the papacy to account for its bloody history. That's Bible-believing Christians who question, who criticize the man-made doctrines of papal Rome that are taken from the, the old Babylonian religion. And uh, Okay, let's get back to the quote now. They shall turn their victorious arms or weapons against the bad Christians and destroy all the rebels against Jesus Christ. Again, I need to translate that for you. All the rebels against Jesus Christ, what that means is all the enemies of papal Rome. Again, Bible-believing Christians who will not bow to papal authority. Continuing the quote, finishing it up. In the whole earth there shall be only twelve kings, one emperor, one pope. Another little short quote. Our Lady is calling us, and again the Roman Catholic faithful, called to a red martyrdom of physical suffering and possibly death for the truth of Jesus Christ. And again, I need to translate that. When they say for the truth of Jesus Christ, they mean for the advancement of the temporal and spiritual authority of the papacy. That's absolutely correct. Now, in the middle of the article, Andrew Mayfield, who wrote this article that uh, Richard Bennett has posted, here's what he says. From what you will see, she, and he's talking about this Mary of Roman Catholic apparitional fame, she is preparing her faithful, her Roman Catholic church, her faithful church to blindly heed her call into her next holy war. In this holy war, she calls her faithful Catholics to become victim souls and to sacrifice their lives and all they possess in order to eliminate from the earth all Muslims, bad Christians, and heathens who do not bow down to Mary and convert to the Roman Catholic faith. I added the word Roman there. So, and the, what's good about this article is that Andrew Mayfield provides uh, the Catholic sources. They're at the bottom of each page for the various Marian apparition messages and the Roman Catholic writings concerning these Marian apparitions that he's quoting in his article. So if you want, you can go to the Catholic websites, and who knows how long they'll leave this up, the Catholics themselves that have put this information out. But you can go, and you can also find out the articles and or books that he is referencing. And again, they're all written by Roman Catholics. So you can see that uh, this is not coming from a Protestant source, these uh, no. messages. These are coming from Catholic sources themselves, Tom, and I think it's just so critical that people, all of us, understand that before the Roman Catholic Church launched its Inquisition, it launched its uh, what they called Holy Crusades against Bible-believing Christians, who they called all kinds of dirty names. They called them Manichaeans. 
lists. They called them dual lists. They accused them of immoralities. Uh, of course, they called them heretics, when really the Albigensian Christians, the Waldensian Christians, which were killed, dear listeners, to the tune of hundreds of thousands and millions, uh, when you add up the Inquisition alone, reputable historians, uh, just during the 600, I think, uh, five years, 605 years of official inquisition running, up to 50 million Bible-believing Christians were murdered by the Roman Catholic Church state, or we, we should, if we should say that just the papacy teaming up with uh, Roman Catholic tyrants uh, to slaughter and butcher all of these people. But before they launched any of their little holy crusades like against the Albigensian Christians uh, in the thir- early 13th century, every time they would do these things, they would, number one, demonize their victims, calling them all kinds of dirty names. Like and number- fundamentalists? <laughs> yes, like, even like today. Like fundamentalists? Exactly. That's, 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 how, that's what we're doing right now, demonizing fundamentalists. So they would demonize their victims, uh, even accuse them of bloodlust, uh, uh, put baking, like they did with the Jews. They even did with the Albigensian Christians, uh, accuse them of uh, taking infant's blood or something and baking it into. And right. the, the poor Roman Catholic people were kept so superstitious in Europe that they believed, many of them believed these lies from their priests. And again, they would launch these professional armies, some of them just coming back from the Crusades in the Middle East, along with all the rapists and murderers they released from prison and telling them, uh, oh, uh, you can, uh, here's the other thing that they did, just like this Marian message pr- promised, is that promising you, you'll go straight to, to heaven, uh, all your sins will be absolved, etc. And then they would cut these people loose on these, uh, like Albigensian Christians, Waldensian Christians, the Bohemian Christians, and uh, the Protestants in the Netherlands, the French Huguenots, and they would cut these uh, armed professional armies with their rapists and murderers onto these poor, innocent Christians who were peasants, farmers, uh, living in small villages, and just wiped the entire villages and even cities out, as they did in Bézier in, in France when they butchered 20,000 people, men, women, and children, horribly violating, raping, and uh, all kinds of things on the women and girls. Uh, and this has just happened, Tom, every 50 to 100 years, the Roman Catholic Church state goes on a mass murder spree, again, accusing everybody of all kinds of evil uh, and then uh, wiping them out. So that's why it's so important that we pay attention to these messages and that uh, we let other people know. Please let them know about this website. And, again, we're going to be giving you information on the other side of the half hour I would assume you got a break coming up here pretty soon, Tom. Yes, I want to, ladies and gentlemen, this document that we're reading from, Andrew Mayfield's entitled, The Marian Apparitions, Are They Biblical and Should You Submit to Them? It's found on BereanBeacon.org, www.BereanBeacon.org. It's on the lower right-hand, uh, the lower right-hand corner on the opening page. Click on the link and read this document yourself. It's in PDF format. This demonic apparition called Mary, as I have predicted, is calling for a Roman Catholic holy war, calling for a global inquisition of heretics. And that's why this program is called Inquisition Update. This is the type of information this program was designed to bring to you. Look at this information for yourself. Read this document for yourself and see that what we are saying is the truth. Mary has become the spokesman for the Roman Catholic Church, and she's calling for a holy war. It's not rumor, it's in print. You're listening to Inquisition Update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. We'll be right back. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, 
or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using Scripture to interpret Scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border. Dot org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Okay, welcome back to Inquisition Update on First Amendment Radio. Now, as promised, returning to our guest, Daryl Eberhardt. I hope you have your pencils and papers ready, as always. The second half hour with Daryl Eberhardt always uh, is given to reference material. Please copy down these books and websites from Daryl. Go ahead, Daryl. Right. And before I give them that, I just want to repeat again uh, that we find a, a common feature, like a modus operandi between like a, the message I read of Pope Pius V and then uh, that uh, Mary an apparitional message, and let me tell them what um, I'm looking here real quick in my dictionary. Uh, modus operandi. Here's what it says: a way of doing or accomplishing something. And let me give the common features that before Rome begins one of its holocausts, one of its um, inquisitions, uh, one of its religious genocides, religious sides. Here's what happens. We've got number one. The intended victims of the upcoming Inquisition or Holocaust must first be demonized. And this is accomplished, as I said earlier, by calling them heretics, as we saw in this latest message, bad Christians, heathens, Manichaeans, dualists, etc. And they stuck a bunch of those names on the Albigensian Christians before they slaughtered them. By the way, they wiped out the entire population of southern France, basically. And has... Also, in the, the past, it's included false accusations against them, such as accusing them of immoralities. Actually, what the, the Roman Catholic priesthood was guilty of, they just accused 
the, their victims. Blood right. lust, et cetera, as I mentioned, mixing blood in, infants' blood in with cookies and bread, et cetera. The same things they, they laid on the Jews when they'd go out and slaughter Jews. Number two, that in this standard modus operandi of the Roman Catholic Church state and its uh, puppet governments uh, around the world whenever they get ready to kill people, the promises have to be given then to the Roman Catholic faithful for the sacrifices that possibly including their very lives that they're going to be called upon to make in this upcoming holy war or holy crusade against the heretics, the heathens, and other assorted infidels. These promises often include such things as absolution of all sins and direct entry into paradise for those who would lose their lives while fighting the enemies of the Roman Catholic Church. And other promises in the past have included the right to loot, rape, pillage, and plunder the enemies of the Roman Catholic Church, or at least to get a share of the loot. The Church always makes sure it gets the lion's share of the loot, uh, with some of it parceled out to the state. And then some of the rapists, murderers, and professional soldiers also uh, uh, get a proportion of the loot and get to do whatever they want with the women and girls, etc. So this is standard, and it can be documented. And so the book I wanted to tell you about first is I just got this book probably a couple weeks ago. It's 317 pages, and it just runs you through one of the – it's probably – it's the best thumbnail sketch of Rome's persecution of Bible believers – burning Bible believers um, and doing many other cruel things to them, torturing them, but it covers the Inquisition, covers the Crusades against uh, Albigensian Christians, the Waldensian Christians like in the 1500s, and also the French Huguenots, and uh, it has a nice subject index in the back, and if you read through this book, you're going to see that, as I said, every 50 to 100 years, the Roman Catholic Church state uh, orchestrates a bloody inquisition. So let me tell them how to get that book, Tom, and then I'll tell them very briefly that this stuff doesn't just happen in the 1200s, the 1500s. By the way, the the formal inquisition ran up into the 19th century. In the early 1800s, Napoleon's troops went into Madrid, and one of the, I think it was a Dominican stronghold, uh, they broke into it, and uh, they asked where the prisoners were, and they said, oh, we don't torture anybody anymore. There's no prison here. And one of the the uh, colonel poured some water on the floor, and it leaked down, and his men, uh, and these were hardened French combat troops, some of the best in Europe. They were sick, throwing up when they went down and saw the, the, the naked people, men, women, who had been brutally tortured and kept in the dark, uh, in dark dungeon cells. Now, this is in the early 1800s, so again, and then we had it in World War II. But let me tell them first the book. It's called Rome and the Bible. Yeah, that's all you need to write down. It's Rome and the Bible. The subtitle is Tracing the History of the Roman Catholic Church and its Persecution of Bible, of the Bible and of Bible Believers. It's by David W. Cloud. And you can uh, get this book for $19.95 plus shipping and handling. If, I know if you, you haven't seen it, but uh, you can get five or more copies for a 25% discount. I, but anyway, the toll-free number, and it's uh, Bethel Baptist uh, Church here up in Canada. But the toll-free number is 866-295-4143. I'm going to give you the number again. But again, 1995 plus you'll have to pay shipping and handling. Uh, again, the toll-free number, and I really, really urge you to get this book. By the way, it's got a hundred illustrations in this book. This man spent thousands of his own dollars to buy rare manuscripts, rare books, and he took almost all of these uh, in, engravings, drawings, etc. Uh, were taken. The hundred illustrations were taken out of old, rare books. So this is a precious book that. Holding in my hand, Rome and the Bible by David W. Cloud, 317-page paperback book, has a beautiful glossy cover. Again, the the phone number to get this, 866-295-4143. And I highly urge you get this book. And, uh, Tom, I think you're going to love this book. It may be one of the ones that you'll like to eventually read. Uh, I'm certain I will, probably. But uh, I'll tell you, it is just a wonderful book. It's worth it almost just for the illustrations, but to see 
And it tells you, by the way, folks, the stories of some very courageous Christian women, Bible-believing women in England that tried to protect uh, some of the men that were trying to get the Bible translated. Um, just some wonderful stories in here, but it's also it's a little, sometimes a little hard to read because it will break your heart at times. But we need to know the truth, Tom, and we can't run away from this. We can't be ostriches that stick our, our, our head in the sand. Uh, we need to know this information, and uh, let me tell them just briefly, for those who would say, oh, that stuff all happened hundreds of years ago, and the Catholic Church has changed. No, they ran a modern-day Holocaust, and I know you're very familiar with it, Tom, a rel- what I call a religious genocide or religious side, as recently as 1941 to 1945. Folks, my dad was in Europe while this was going on fighting in, for the American, in American Army, U.S. Army. But in 1941 to 45, in Roman Catholic fascist Croatia is where this religious side occurred. And what we found was the fascist state of Croatia and the Croatian Roman Catholic Church teamed up together to murder up to one million innocent Serb Orthodox Christians, men, women, elderly, and children during those four years. The Croatian Roman Catholic Ustashi, it was a sort of like a, a paramilitary force before the, the fascist government got set up there uh, under uh, with Hitler's uh, blessing and, of course, uh, the Vatican's blessing. But this Rome, these Roman Catholic Ustashi became the actual army of the, the Roman Catholic fascist state in Croatia. So these Ustashi military units carried out this brutal religious genocide they were frequently led and urged on by Franciscan priests, monks, and friars, many of whom have exchanged their clerical clothes for uniforms. In fact, two Roman Catholic Jesuit prelates named Monsignor Aloysius Stepanich and Monsignor Ivan Saric, respectively the archbishops of Zagreb and Sarajevo, planned and orchestrated this modern-day Holocaust. The Roman Catholic Ostashi were not content to simply murder their victims, they often brutally tortured their victims prior to killing them. The Ustashi buried people alive. They skinned people alive. They burned people alive. They crucified Orthodox priests to wooden doors, and they brutally molested and tortured women and girls prior to murdering them. They had forced conversions with the priests there. And at uh, some of the forced conversions, and most of, by the way, most of the Orthodox Christians did not convert. They just murdered them. But the, the few that did convert, they slit their throats after they converted just to make sure they wouldn't change their mind. And some of the Ostashi made necklaces of the eyes that they had gouged out, gouged out of their poor victims, many of them while they were still alive. Now, this genocide, which included forced conversions, is documented in a book, The Vatican's Holocaust, by Avro Manhattan. You can Google that on the net. I know Ozark Books sells it, The Vatican's Holocaust. But I just, Tom, wanted to make the point that this stuff doesn't just didn't all happen way in the far, far distant past. This modern day Holocaust, which was it, it sickened German troops when they came across some of these massacres and caught the Roman Catholic Ostashi butchering these Orthodox Christians simply because they were not Roman Catholic Christians. And it wasn't just the Ustashi and what happened in Croatia. Information that I've shared here on Inquisition Update makes it perfectly clear the se- the entire Second World War was religiously uh, motivated, and what happened in Croatia was 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 uh, Hitler's form of that was the Holocaust against the Jews, six million Jews, Plus and the Vatican the Vatican was all behind that, and and that speaks nothing. For the tens of millions of Protestants and Orthodox who were slaughtered in Russia and and uh, and Europe, special, spe- they especially hated and, and of course they ran an Inquisition uh, after the war and uh, behind the Iron Curtain. And we need to remember that uh, a Jesuit trained Stalin was put into power uh, by the Vatican, and uh, uh, that they particularly hated Baptists. Mennonites, anyone that you would consider a separatist Christian, but as you already mentioned, Tom, I just wanted to give them a little 
tiny piece of what went on. But the entire war was directed at, number one, killing as many Jews as possible, as many Orthodox Christians, and not only in, in what would have been then present-day Yugoslavia, but also in the Soviet Union when they went through. But they also killed probably through the forced marches and everything in Prussia, the northeastern part of Germany, the Protestants that were up there, and the firebombing. They killed uh, probably several million Protestants there. The, the mainly Roman Catholic southern part of Germany was spared most of the bombing. The heavy firebombing on cities was Protestant cities in the north. So, yeah, it, the, was a, it was a genocide against all of Rome's historic enemies, Jews, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians, and independent Christians, Bible-believing Christians, were slaughtered. And then after the war, everything behind the Iron Curtain, they ran inquisitions. And again, many, uh, some people can read, have read Richard Vermbron's book, uh, How They Tortured uh, Bible-Believing Christians in Romania. But uh, Hungary, uh, the story was Poland. It was repeated over and over again, uh, Central and Eastern Europe that was occupied by the Soviet forces. And again, communism was founded by the Catholic Church, uh, Roman Catholic Church state, the Jesuits, with their reductions in Paraguay in the 1600s and uh, their backing of uh, the communists that took over the Soviet Union. And as I mentioned, Stalin was Jesuit trained at the Tiflis Seminary. So behind all of these movements, you find uh, Jesuit advisors, Jesuits, uh, and other Roman Catholic priests uh, backing them as they did the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, uh, uh, Fidel Castro, his top advisor, one of his top advisors was a Jesuit. Uh, as a matter of fact, Tom, it's hard to, to find any revolutionary movement, any uh, people that have uh, uh, fomented a civil war like the American Civil War under the Jesuit front group uh, uh, called the Knights of the Golden Circle. You can't turn a stone and not find uh, Jesuit fingerprints and footprints uh, all around uh, different wars, including, as I mentioned, fomenting our American Civil War. Um, these guys are murderers, and let's call them what they are. They're mass murderers. They love torture, and as I said, they go on a mass murdering spree every 50 to 100 years, and I think they're getting ready, Tom, for their biggest one ever. They're getting ready for the grand finale, Daryl, and I, wa I want to make sure our listeners don't miss the point that we're trying to emphasize now. We started this discussion with this, this, this claim that, oh, the Inquisition was a long time ago. That's over with. But what we're trying to tell the listeners is that Inquisition has been redefined. It's no longer hooded priests going from town to town, rounding up heretics and trying them, burning them on the stake. Now it's called World War. It's so big now that you can hardly describe it as an Inquisition as we have traditionally known the Inquisition. It's, 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 it's like a mouse trying to describe an elephant when the only thing he can do is see his big toe. I mean, it looks like a boulder, but attached to it is this huge elephant. I mean, let's not get fixated with the old toe and let's see the entire elephant. Right, it's and world, world war. <laughs> it's world war now that is that that is the that is the name that is thrust upon. Holy Roman Inquisition. And we're about to see the biggest bloodbath in world history. And uh, much of that bloodshed is going to take place right here in the United States. Mary, in this document that we're reading, is calling for a holy war. And she's going to, she's going to encourage her Roman Catholic faithful to kill bad Christians and to be martyrs in that effort. And what is the most horrific aspect of this is the realization that those who once called themselves Protestants and went to Protestant uh, churches have joined the ecumenical movement to reunite with the Roman Catholic Church, and it will be they who are helping to burn and extirpate Bible-believing Christians. That's and right. that's a concept that is almost incomprehensible to me, but it's the truth, Daryl. Yeah. Let me give them a couple books that where they can find out about Mary and these Marian apparition messages. Uh, I'll give you a phone number first because I'm going to give you two books from Chick Publications that they still have. Um, the phone number for Chick Publications is 909-987-9900.
I'll give it again, but these two books are critical to understanding what's going on with Mary and uh, where she, how the Catholic Church has exalted her and why, they're, how, why and how they're using these apparitional messages. And uh, Chick Publications still has these two books. So, again, the phone number, and you can order this by credit card. That's why I'm just giving you the phone number, 909-987-0700. Zero seven seven one. Tom already mentioned the one book. It's called Queen of All. The full title is Queen of Rome, Queen of Islam, Queen of All. The Marian Apparitions Plan to Unite All Religions Under the Roman Catholic Church. Just ask for the book Queen of All. It's nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. Queen of All, written by three authors: Jim Tetlow, Roger Oakland, and Brad Myers. Uh, Two thousand and six published uh, Eternal Publications. It's a very good book. Very important book. Very important book. That book is what taught me that Mary is the spokesman for the Roman Catholic Church, or rather the Roman Catholic Church speaks through this demon called Mary. And let's not forget, the Jesuit order is the biggest promoter of Mary and exalting her and of these Marian apparitional messages. 154-page right. paperback book, book called Queen of All, 995 plus shipping and handling. The other book that I would recommend you get from Chick Publications is called Babylon Religion, and that's all you need to ask for. Just write down Babylon Religion. It's a 224-page paperback book that's illustrated. Babylon Religion, the rest of the title is How a Babylonian Goddess Became the Virgin Mary. Uh, an excellent book. It uses simple language and illustrations to give conclusive evidence that the Mary of Roman Catholicism is the religious spitting image, uh, my words, of the uh, Babylonian queen goddess Semiramis or Semiramis, as some people say, and that some of these Roman Catholic doctrines, such as auricular confession to a priest, came directly as did this worship of a goddess from the pagan Babylonian goddess religion. So Babylon religion, and that book is 1195 plus shipping and handling, uh, and that one is by David W. Daniels, 224 pages. Uh, two, let me give him one more book. Uh, but this one you're going to have to send for. It's called The Myth of Mary. It's a very good book. It's a 192-page paperback book called The Myth of Mary, and I don't know if I pronounced the guy's name right. It's written by Cesar Vidal, V-I-D-A-L. And uh, Chick Publications originally published it, but they don't carry it any longer. But it provides the historical truth about Mary and compares it with the goddess Mary of Roman Catholicism. Uh, you can get this book through the Conversion Center for $13 postage paid to U.S. locations. So that's $13. You would make your check or money order payable to the Conversion Center Incorporated, the Conversion Center Incorporated, and you'd mail it to the Conversion Center, and I'll give the address twice, Box 31688, that's 31688, Raleigh, North Carolina, NC, 27622. Again, $13. You'd make your check payable to the Conversion Center, Incorporated, and you'd mail it to the Conversion Center, Box 31688, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27622. And that, of course, when I said $13 postage page, that's the U.S. locations. They don't take credit card orders. If you're outside of the U.S., I'll give you their phone number, and you can call and find out what it would cost to ship it to you. 919-782-6140. 919-782-6140. You can do Google searches of... Chick used to carry one called Messages from Heaven. They do have a DVD, but I don't have it, but if you want to ask about it. I uh, highly recommend that video. I highly recommend that video. And then, uh, so Messages from Heaven, if you want to Google search that book on the Internet, there's another one called Quite Contrary by Timothy F. Kaufman. Quite Contrary is 190-page paperback. And there's another one, is, the, is This the Mary of the Bible? 249-page paperback book written by Dan Corner. You can Google those on the Internet and see if you can track those down. They may, they may only be available in used copies right now. But, Tom, I think it's important we, we learn about Mary, whether they're uh, the, the real Mary, compare the real Mary of the Bible against 
these Marian apparitions and their messages. And I think if people will be honest, if they're Roman Catholics, and take a look at some of the materials, the books that we recommended, especially those first two books, Babylon Religion and Queen of All, if they'll read those and check them up and then get out their Bible and, and compare, they're going to find out that uh, this has to be demons that are or maybe or and or Lucifer himself that is masquerading as the Mary, uh, the Blessed Mary of the Holy Bible that was the mother of Jesus Christ's physical body only. She's not the mother of God. She's not the co-mediatrix. She's not the queen of heaven. Uh, as a matter of fact, and they can look in the book of Jeremiah and look up uh, in a concordance. Queen of heaven is, is when uh, the, uh, some of the uh, Israeli Israelites worshipped the queen of heaven, they, it was strongly condemned in the Bible. Uh, we, we have a holy father in heaven. There's no holy father on earth. The pope is not the holy father. They give him that title. But again, they're giving the pope and this uh, Mary of the apparitional fame uh, titles of deity, which is blasphemy. And we need to realize this, and we need to realize the, the times we're living in, and I would urge folks to, when they read that uh, on uh, BereanBeacon.org, that uh, uh, the Marian apparitions article, print it off and uh, get it out to other people and tell your friends and relatives and neighbors about that article so they can go up and read it while it's still there and available on Richard Bennett's website, who, by the way, was an ex-priest of 22 years. So, Tom, I, I so appreciate you having me on to talk about this topic because um, it may be scary to some folks, but we, as I said, we can't be ostriches with our head in the sand. And the modus operandi of uh, the Roman Catholic Church state has been to, every 50 to 100 years, to eliminate its enemies. And uh, I believe that people like you and me and uh, Greg Szymanski, uh, we're on the top of their list. And if you're out there and you're uh, exposing papal Rome, it's uh, paganistic doctrines, uh, it's bloody history, you're on the top of their list too. But by being silent, you're not going to help anything. What we need to do is this thing's coming. We're not going to stop it, but we need to do as much damage control as possible, Tom. Well, I want to thank my guest, Daryl Eberhardt, for bringing us this most valuable information. Please go to www.bereanbeacon.org. On the opening page, scroll down to the very bottom, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a link to the Marian Apparitions. Hey, Tom, Click can I get that. my website real quick? Yes, toughissues.org. Toughissues.org, and I have an article up there, The Real Mary, that they might want to read, and they can print it off for free. None of my stuff's copyrighted. Toughissues.org. Thanks for having me on, Tom. God bless you. You bet. And thanks for my listeners. Stay tuned for Nicholas Arthur's Cross the Border Sound Biblical Teaching. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.
Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border org c r o s s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org